Hello, this is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. And it's a nationality? Okay, so I want you to look at this right here. Bring it up. The Bible says that you're in Israel. You see this, bro? What's your name? Aaron. Aaron? Brother Aaron. I'm Mattathias, brother. Nice to meet you, man. The one that helped uh, Moses. <laughs> okay, that was Moses' brother. That was Moses' brother. You're right. good. You're good. All right. So, according to the Bible, you're an Israelite, brother Aaron. Right. Okay. And depending on what your father is, depends on what tribe you come from. So, your father, would it be so-called black American? Would he be West Indian? Would he be so-called Haitian? What would he be? Black American? This is why we're out here, brothers and sisters. We're out here to show you who we are in the Bible. Right. Read that. Give me Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. Read. Bring it out. The book. Matter of fact, uh, Isaiah 1, verse 3. Isaiah 1, verse 3. All right, listen to this, brother Aaron. Read that. Because I was asking you, what's your nationality? You said Hebrew. Hebrew is a language. Israelite is the nation. You understand? Hebrew is the language we used to speak. Israelite is the nation that we come from. So listen to that. Read that. The book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 3. Bring it out. The ox knoweth his owner. So you got an ox. The ox is a dumb animal, right? You can put yokes, at, you can uh, attach yokes to it. It can till the ground for you, all of that. The ox is a dumb animal. The ox knows his owner, right? Read. And the ass his master's crib. And the donkey. A donkey knows where he comes from, his master's crib. You can put a donkey several miles away from where it lives, and it'll find its way back home. That's what a donkey does. Another dumb animal, right? Read. But Israel. But who? But Israel. But Israel, like my brother Aaron, like me before I came into the truth, like all of us brothers right here, read. Not know. 
Israel doesn't know who they are. You don't even know, you don't know who you are. You don't know that you're an Israelite. You don't know that you come from the same stock as David. You don't know that you come from the same stock as, as Aaron, like you mentioned in the Bible, as Moses. Those are your forefathers. That's right. You read this Bible and you picture Caucasian people. You don't picture your people. That's right. You see that? Read it again. It says Israel what? But Israel doeth not know. Israel don't know. Read. My people doeth not consider. And, and the problem is most of our people don't even consider who we are. If I was to go up to that uh, so-called black person right over there wearing that mask and I asked them what's the nationality, they'd probably say African-American. You might say black. Another one might say Negro. Another one might say colored. Another one might say, I'm just an American. Another one might say human being. How confused are we? Read that again. Right. Because Israel does not consider who we are. Who we are is important. If it wasn't important, they wouldn't have stole it from you. Right. You understand that? Read it again. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. Uh -huh. But Israel doth not know. Israel don't know who we are. Read. My people doth not consider. We don't even consider. So that's why we're out here. We're out here to bring our people back to who we are. How did we get in this predicament? How did we come into the point where now we are living in the, in, in the United States of America, uh, still to this day got a march uh, holding signs saying, I am a man. How did that happen? How'd that happen, bro? Well, you know the Bible says you should help the poor too, right? The Bible does say you should help the poor. Watch this, give me Sirach chapter 12. But I'm gonna get back to who we are in a second. Cause you're you're on that, so I want to show you something that the Bible says. I got, no I got you, brother. I got you. I got you. But you gotta listen. Listen to what the Bible says. I read the Bible every day. It says the Bible should help uh -huh. anybody you see a need. You should help. It doesn't say that. What, what book, book chapter verse? Bro, it says that. I anybody you see a need, day. help them. Cause I'm gonna show you. The King James version. Bible we got it. We got a King James version right here. Read this. Okay, listen. The book of Sirach, chapter twelve, verse one. When that when thou wilt do good. Know to who thou doest it. Bible says if you're going to do good to anyone, you got to know to who you're doing it to. Do I know you? Right. Do I know you? No, but your spirit ain't telling you. Read that. Read. But brother, you're, you're, you're going to say something. Let's read what the Bible says. Read on. So shall thou be thanked by, for thy benefits. Uh -huh. Do good to the godly man, uh -huh. and thou shalt find a recompense. Bible says do good. How do I know you're a godly man? How do you know I'm not? I don't know you. The Bible says, read it from the top the again. Say, read it from the top again. Listen, brother, you gotta listen to the Bible. Yeah. So rock, hey, let me pull out hey, my Bible. Hey, yeah, pull out your Bible. I got a question for you. Okay, so Matthew 5 and verse 3. Aaron, Aaron, I, you keep going back to this poor thing, right? So what is it that you're trying to accomplish? What when you say we should help the poor? Uh, me personally, what I'm trying to do? Yeah. Because you keep saying we should be helping the poor, right? Or the everybody, Bible says we should help the poor. Anybody that say they call themselves holy shit. Like, not even just the poor, just people, anybody in need. You know, it's in the Bible. Okay. I mean, I'm well, I'm, and we finna read, I'm going to read this scripture this for you. Now, watch this. Watch this. Re watch what he say. Because I'm going to go to a scripture about but being poor. Before you go to, go to that, yeah. hey, let's hey, remind hey. each other that this is generations of the Bible. You feel me? Generations of the Bible. Like what do you mean? I'm, I'm trying to tell you. I yeah. Feel like this Bible is 300, 400 years old, right? Okay. African Americans been enslaved 300, 400 years. Yeah. They start making stuff in the Bible and take extra stuff. So, the bi so you feel like the Bible, Bible is being Bible edited? Saying, it's said been edited. Yeah, all of it is just okay, I got you. Stay with me, Aaron. We're going we to deal with that. We'll, try to make it to where I got the you. Can understand. We'll, we'll, deal with, we'll deal with both of those things. But I want to deal with poor first. Watch this. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 3. Yeah. Blessed are the poor in spirit. The who? The poor in spirit. It's not talking about financial. It's talking about the poor in spirit. Right. Right. Who are the poor in spirit, Aaron? The children of Israel are the poor in spirit. That's right. It's not talking about everybody else because the other That's nations spirit. out there today are not walking around sagging their pants. Right. The other nations are not running around killing each other. Bring it out. We are the poor in spirit. The Bible said, Christ said, the poor in spirit. Right. It didn't say people that don't have enough financial means. That's not what it's talking about. But what you got to recognize is that white Jesus has crept into your mind and caused you to believe that the Bible is talking about everybody. White Jesus has crept into your mind and made you think that poor people talk about somebody that don't have no money. Jeez. That's not what it's talking about, Aaron. Why right. you shaking your head? I just probably just didn't understand it. I, and that's what... And, that's understandable. It's, it's, it's Neither did we understand, it's right? Still, Go ahead. It's still kind of related because a 
poor spirit could be a rich man. You feel me? No, that, exactly. The poor, exactly. What him, makes like, you a poor say, spirit? But Aaron. Aaron. You can't say I'm not a good, you don't know about a good spirit. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Aaron, we can. Because the Bible. No, nah, that's what I'm saying. We can tell you. We can tell you how to judge spirits. Go to First John chapter uh, 2, I believe it is. That, that we're going to show you. Say, we, the Bible will show you. Chapter 2, start at verse 2. Aaron, Aaron, you've been reading the Bible wrong, though. You've been reading it with white Jesus in your mind. Right. Because I'm going to tell you, the Bible. No, 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 no. The Bible tells you how to get understanding. Watch this. Come on. Yeah. And he, the book of First John, chapter two, verse two. Yeah. And he is the propitiation for our sins, yeah. and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And hereby we do know. And hereby we do know. Know what? We know him. Who is the him? Christ. Hereby we do know if we know him. What? If we keep his commandments. So how do we know if we good spirits or not? What do we have to do to be a good spirit? What did Christ just say? How do I know y'all doing it? Th there you go. How do you know? What are the commandments, Jeff? What are the commandments, Aaron? Commandments? Yeah, what are they? All ten. It's more than that. What are they, though? Are we, are we in, in Christianity, do they teach you? Hold on. You're right. In Christianity, do they teach you to keep the Ten Commandments? They don't. And that's what I'm saying. That's why you out here today trying to sell us something. Because you don't know that the Ten Commandments aren't being taught when you read the Bible. I'm not selling you nothing. I'm trying to raise your spirit out of being poor. Right. Let's go to uh, John chapter 14, verse 15. I'm not trying to sell you nothing. I'm trying to raise your spirit out of the poor estate that it's in, Aaron. That's right. You're in a poor spiritual estate. That's right. You understand? Thinking the Bible has been edited or grafted or, or uh, misrepresented, that's being poor in spirit. We can't trust nobody. It's always a conspiracy against us. They done messed with the Bible, so I can't trust it no more. I'm going to prove it to I you that it's that. right. No, I'm, you said it could have been edited. That's what you said, right? Yeah. Okay, nope. watch this. The book of John, chapter 14, verse 15. Yeah. If ye love me, keep my commandments. Now, Christ said if you love him, you would keep his commandments. That's, right. That's how we identify if a spirit is poor or not. Because now you are keeping the commandments of God. When you were a poor spirit, you were keeping the commandments. You didn't know that the Bible was talking about you. You thought the Bible had been edited or, or, or destroyed or messed with in some form or fashion. We think we can sell things on the Sabbath day. In, Christ, in the Christian church, they don't teach us anything. They don't teach us nothing. Give me that one in Psalms where it says, uh, he showed the word of Jacob. You grew up where? You grew up where? I grew up in a Christian church and a Jehovah's Witness church. And a Jehovah's Witness church. And both of them. Both of them have white Jesus in there. That's right. That still destroys our spirit because they don't tell us that the Bible is talking about us. Before we got here in 1619, Aaron, where were we? You think we was born on slave ships? Where were we? What were we doing? And that's the thing that he was trying to show you. We are the 12 tribes of Israel. We are war captives. We was captured, captured in a war. And you still here today, not even knowing who you are. That's why the Bible, why he read the scripture says, our people do not consider. We out here reading the Bible, people are avoid us, thinking that they don't want to come over here. This is the best thing you're going to ever hear in your life, that you are the 12 tribes of Israel. And salvation and glory and your spirit not being poor is only related to you keeping the commandments of God. That's right. Read that scripture. The book of Psalms, chapter 147, verse 19. Yes. He showed his word unto Jacob. See, God only showed his word to Jacob. Who's Jacob? Jacob is the 12 tribes of Israel. Right. So those Caucasian people that you're saying that edited the Bible, he said he only gave his word to Jacob. Now I'm going to prove it to you. You got a Bible on your phone, right? It died, though? Okay, we're going to go to Acts 13 and verse 1. Because you say it's been edited, right? If it's been edited, they would have took this out. But they didn't. The, the 1611, the 1619 version, the 1611 version that was put together, so you, that you, was put together by King James, a black man. That's right. So you're right. telling me you understand the whole Bible. I'm telling you, I keep the commandments of God and it gives me understanding. I'm learning things every day. I know. I'm still learning things every day. And I'm telling you, but that, that don't mean I haven't made any progress, well, I, though. I, I, Just I, because, I, hold on, hold on, like Aaron. I can't get educated by me on the Bible stuff. Like, I read the Bible, too, so we are. No, you have to learn from men that are already keeping the commandments. That's the problem with our people. Right. We think that we can do it by ourselves. We, we think we can reinvent the wheel. No, instead of the other nations, listen, listen, listen. The other nations build with each other. 
We try to build individually. One of my favorite quotes by a Caucasian man, right, uh, Isaac Newton, he said that I can see further into the future when I stand on the shoulders of giants. That's what we refuse to do as a people. We won't work together. You say, nah, I'm going to just read by myself. I'm going to figure it out on my own. Instead of getting with brothers that's already started on the trail, and now I can stand on their shoulders and build on the knowledge that's already been established. Right. I'm going to start at the ground level again. You're going to start at the ground level again. Why? Because you hate unity. Because we're poor in spirit. You know what I'm saying? Watch this. What I call Acts 13.1. Watch this. The book of Acts, chapter 13, verse 1. Yep. Now there were in the church that was in Antioch yep. certain prophets and teachers yep. as Barnabas and Simon. So Barnabas and Simeon, these were the disciples, right? And they did say it was fake prophets. Hold on. That, stop. Aaron, 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 you know what you're doing? You listening, but you like, your brain is like going everywhere. Again, that's another sign of you being poor in spirit. You don't have any type of attention span. Soon as we start talking, your brain drift off to something else. Stay with me, Aaron, so we can build together. But when you drift off, we can't because now you your brain is over here. You your attention span, your attention span has to stay with me. Stay with me. Yeah. We're talking about Barnabas and Simeon that were the disciples. Are you with me? Yeah, but I mean, we was finishing that one conversation. You switched it. I was just trying to finish that. Listen, that we talk about Barnabas and Simeon that were disciples. I'm trying to show you how we're poor in spirit. I'm trying to show you that the Bible has not been edited from the 1611 version that King James, a black man, put together. Right. I'm trying to show you that, but listen to me. Come on, read that again. As now there was in the church that was in Antioch yep. certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon uh -huh. that was called nigger. Why would they call the disciples that walk with Christ niggers? Why would it do that? Because this Bible was written for us, by us, and to us. Right. right. But we don't know. We don't even know that Acts 13, 1 exists. Go to John, I mean, Revelation chapter 1, verse 14. We don't even know these things exist, but that's why we poor in spirit. That's why the Bible says we do not consider. We don't even consider that the Bible is talking about us. That's the right. Bible prophesies us coming into slavery on slave ships Jeez. because we broke God's laws. Right. And now we poor in spirit and we shave our face. We sag our pants. We shoot each other. And we don't think these things have an effect. That's what makes us poor in spirit. That's right. Because That's we right. won't work together. Because we don't have no self-respect. Because we have short attention spans. All of these things have made us poor That's in spirit. Right. Come on. The book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 14. Yeah. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Now, the Bible said that Christ's hairs was white like wool. The image that you see in the Seventh-day Adventist church, the image you see in the Christian church, he don't have white woolly hair, right? Watch, come on. As white as snow, uh -huh. and his eyes were as a flame of fire. So in the Christian church, in the, in the Seventh-day Adventist church, they saw you a Caucasian man with blue eyes, right? Come on. And his feet like unto fine brass. Now it says his feet was like fine brass, Aaron. That's your kind of feet. That's your skin complexion. That's what Jesus Christ looked like. Read on. As if they burned in a furnace. And not only that, he was very dark skinned. Bring it out. Christ was a dark skinned, tall brother. But they teach us that he was a, a Caucasian short brother. None of that's true. Go to Matthew chapter 24, verse 24. That's what makes us poor in spirit. Right. That's how we know the 1611 version has not been edited. Because it still identifies that the children of God look like the children of God. Right. You right. Right. The children of God, when, at, when God made Adam at the beginning of the Bible, the first son of God, what did he make him from? Yeah. Boom, what color is dust? You ever seen white dust? No. He made him from the dust of the ground, and he was a brown-skinned brother. That's right. That's how we know that the Bible from the beginning to the end is talking about dark-skinned people, That's right. the children of Israel. That's one more, one more. Watch this. The that. book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 24. This, Aaron, stay with me. For there shall arise false Christ. Now, what did the Bible say was going to happen, or what was going to come? You got to stay with me. See what I'm saying? Watch it. For there shall arise false Christ. Aaron, what did he just say? What's going to arise? No, he didn't say that. Read it again. Matthew chapter 24, verse 24. Yep. For there shall arise false Christ. False Christ. What's a false Christ? How do you identify a false Christ if you don't know what the real Christ look like? Right. How do you do those things? But again, these are the things that make us poor in spirit, Aaron. Right. These are the things that have destroyed us as a nation, Aaron. You know what I'm saying? So that's why we're telling you, you shouldn't sell. 
that equals to you being poor in spirit. That's right. You thinking you can sell something on on God's Sabbath uh, day. Uh, you can't do that. You can't say that. Why can't I? I read the Bible. You can't tell me. You read it. Saying, Exodus 31, verse 18. I'm, I'm finna show you. The I, Bible and that, says, whatever you're doing is bad or good, if it's for your, if it's, if it's for good, like, in a way, it's, it's okay. I'm nah. Reading, yeah, That's not, Bible, at, we gonna, we gonna read no, this. Look, the Bible saying, bro, the Bible says basically like, like, we all got our own personal relationship with God. That's what I'm saying. That's that's what white Jesus taught you. Right. That's what Christianity taught you. God is dealing with black, the black nation. He's God dealing with the children of Israel as a nation. That's not true. But again, where do you, show me a scripture where God, God say, I love everybody. Watch, I'm going to show, we're going to read it out the Bible. Give me Exodus 31, verse 18. Watch this. The book of Exodus, chapter 31, verse 16. Read it out. Wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath, uh -huh. to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations, yep. for a perpetual covenant. 18. 15. 18 is what you oh, Six days may work be done, yep. but in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest. Uh -huh. Holy to the Lord, whosoever doeth any work in the Sabbath day. So that's what you're doing right now. You're trying to sell that, right? Doing any work. Come on. He shall be put to death. What did God say is going to be the judgment of you selling something on the Sabbath day? Put to death. So you said that I don't love you or I don't care about the poor people when I'm not. And I'm telling you that these are the things that's going to get you put to death. Aaron, that is, that's, that's, that's hypocrisy. But again, in your mind, Christianity has told you you can do whatever as long as I'm saying it's for Jesus. Right. Christ gives you specifics on how to serve him. You can't serve him however you want to. That's right. Like if you have a wife, right? If you have a woman. Uh, are, are you married? Nah? Okay. I'm married, right? I can't love my wife by slapping her in the face and saying, oh, I love you. I have to love her by doing what? Taking care of her. But right. we think we can slap Christ in the face by selling things on the Sabbath day and say that means I love him. That's not, that's a slap to his face. Bring it that's up. That's not love. What's the word? Abordinary? What's the word he used? Abolish? Abomination. It's abomination. That's exactly what you're doing. You're you committing an abomination. I read the Bible. You're reading the Bible, but you got to be able to put it into action. That's what you see in the brothers in front of you. You're not. When I read the Bible and it says something basically like, I can't really get the same exact words. Try to, try to quote it. I got you. It says something like, Basically, like, if you out, God, this is what Jesus is seeing on the news this time. Yeah. Basically, like, people that's doing stuff, like Aaron, Aaron, I read, yeah. like, the Aaron and Moses and stuff. Aaron yeah. came to help Moses. I'm yeah. helping my family. I'm trying to go help my family and sell this. Yeah. Now, family. let's go, let's go to Aaron Revelations. Like, We're going to go again, back Aaron, to Christ. God told Moses to have Aaron to help you, to help you. Absolutely. But he told him to also keep the God commandments. In my head to, to, this is no, he didn't. He didn't put that in your head. Why Jesus put that in your head? Right. It say Matthew 24, 24 said that there shall arise false Christ. You're following false Christ by believing that. You got to understand, bro. This is my only pair of shoes I got on, right? Yep. I just got these. I'm going to sell it for a reason. Yep. So, so, again, Zephaniah 2 and 1. Zephaniah 2 and 1. Hey, Aaron. Zephaniah 2 and 1 tells you what, right? We're going to go to it. But if you choose, no, listen, Aaron, you you can't you can't hear. It's like you your attention span is so short. I hear. You got to stay with me, bro. I hear. Zephaniah 2 and 1. Now, you said these are my only pair of shoes. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you something out the Bible. Now, watch what it says. The book of Zephaniah, chapter 2, verse 1. Yeah. Gather yourselves together. What did God say we supposed to do? What did he say we supposed to do, Aaron? We supposed to be out individually trying to sell shoes to survive? Or did he say do something different? He said all type of stuff. Listen. He said a lot gather of stuff. yourselves together. He said to gather yourselves together, Aaron. That means that if you choose to work with your brothers, you wouldn't be in this position. Okay. Right. If you choose to keep the commandments of God, you wouldn't be in this position. Right. But instead, in Christianity, they teach you can work individually for your own salvation, right. and that will help you. Right. These, again, are signs of you being poor in spirit. Right. You're thinking you got to work by yourself to get this done. you got a whole nation of brothers that's ready to go to war with you and fight that's with right. you. Didn't you hear Kyrie saying, I got a whole army behind me? That's, right. that's the army of God that's keeping his commandments. That's, that's getting their resources together and able to help each other. When you read the book of Acts, it say they all gave so that none of them had lack. Right. But instead, you think I'm going to go work by myself. Again, that's Christianity. Again, that's white Jesus. Again, that's the false Christ that's in your head. Revelation 22, verse 16. Again, these things are in the Bible. 22, 14, I mean. Watch this. 
The book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse 14. Yep. Blessed are they that do his commandments. Now, this is the last book, the last chapter of the Bible, when Christ is still telling you to do the same thing, which is what? He just said, blessed those that, what? What you say again? Exactly. Blessed are they that do his commandments. What did he say you have to do to be blessed? Did he say you selling shoes on the Sabbath day is going to cause you to be in a better financial situation or a worse situation? He said, blessed. Blessed uh -huh. those that are blessed. No, he didn't no, say that. Say, what he say, say Come on. Blessed are they that do his commandments. He said, blessed that do his commandments. There you go. Is selling shoes on the Sabbath day going doing his commandments? Is that doing his commandments? I'm asking you, is it doing his commandments? It's not. So instead of you being blessed, what you going to be? Hold on. Instead of you being blessed, what are you going to be instead? Bring it up. Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. I ju we just told you what the judgment was. There's no reason we got to be confused on what Christ's judgment is. It it's right here written. But instead, when you read the Bible, you got white Jesus stuck between your ears. Okay. You got to get him out of there. It's a lot of contradiction because... It's no said, contradiction. It's said, on the only contradiction... Six days, the only contradiction is the thought that Christianity put in your head in comparison to what's written in the Bible. Right. There's no contradiction. You just got to remove the white Jesus from your eyes and you'll be able to see. So you telling me y'all wouldn't, wouldn't buy nothing on the sixth day? Hell no! Because we don't want, we on the sick on, on Friday sundown to Saturday sundown, we don't buy nothing. We the, keep God's commandments. What about That's tomorrow? Right. Tomorrow, yeah. There's nothing wrong with buying and selling on Sunday. Nah, you got to stick with that. You can't do that. You can't. That's contradictory. How is that contradictory? He gave you specifics. That's like me, man. I'm going to go turn up. Aaron, you, you, so, you, hey, you so spaced, bro. Like, I'm talking to you, and your brain, like, just scattered. It's crazy. No, just, you have no, leader, you have no attention span, no, bro. Leader, what are you voice. talking about? I'm trying to tell you. you talk How can you be a leader body. if you won't follow nobody, bro? That's not leadership. The book of Sirach, chapter 33, verse 7. Yep. Why doth one day excel another? Yep. When, when as all the light of every day in the year is of the sun. Yep. By the knowledge of the Lord. By the knowledge of the Lord, come on. They were distinguished. So the Lord no, distinguished the days between each other, Aaron. That's what God said. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models. Nation is you. And finally, my brethren, be strong in the